Hello everyone, myself Dr. Neha. Here I am going to discuss about anatomy of anterior abdominal wall. The abdomen is a cylindrical chamber extending from diaphragm to the base of pelvis. It comprises abdomen proper and the lesser pelvis. In this diagram we can see the red line is showing you the boundaries of pelvic inlet. These boundaries are formed by the upper border of pubic symphysis, pubic crest, arcuate line and the sacral promontory. This line demarcates the dis difference between the abdomen proper and lesser pelvis. The area beneath this line is known as lesser pelvis and the area above this is known as abdomen proper. Contents of abdomen proper are the digestive tubes, liver, pancreas, spleen, kidneys, parts of ureters, superinner gland and various blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and nerves which are related to these organs. Contents of lesser pelvis include terminal parts of ureter, urinary bladder, sigmoid colon, rectum, some coils of ileum, internal genitalia, blood vessels, lymph vessels and the nerves. Functions of the abdomen It houses and protects the major visceras of the abdominal cavity. Now the boundaries of abdomen. It has a roof which is formed by the under surface of the diaphragm. It has a floor which is formed by the pelvic diaphragm on the posterior side and urogenital diaphragm on the anterior side. It has anterior wall which is made up of three flat muscles and their aponeurosis. The posterior wall is made up of the muscles of posterior abdominal wall. In this diagram we can see the muscles of anterior abdominal wall. They are the external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis and the rectus abdominis. These are the muscles of posterior abdominal wall. The yellow colored dot is showing the swas major, blue colored dot is showing the quadratus lumborum and the ilicus muscle which are originating from the ilic fossa. They are forming the muscles of posterior abdominal wall. Then the abdomen has been divided into nine regions with the help of four lines. These lines are imaginary lines and they are the mid clavicular lines, the subcostal and the trans tubercular plane. The mid clavicular line passes vertically downwards through the midpoint of the clavicle, then it crosses the tip of 9 costal cartilage and then the mid inguinal point. So here we can see the two mid, uh, vertical planes that is the mid clavicular lines and two horizontal planes that is your subcostal plane and trans tubercular plane. The subcostal planes passes at the level of L3 vertebra through the lower border of the costal margin and the trans tubercular plane passes at the level of L5 vertebra. So this is the trans tubercular and subcostal planes. These four lines they divide the abdominal cavity into nine areas for the location of particular organs. They are the right hypochondrium, the left hypochondrium, the epigastric region, then there are right and left flanks, flanks means the lumbar areas, in between them we have the umbilical region, then below that we have the pubic region, on both the sides of pubis we have the groin, right and left groin. Some other lines or planes of the abdomen, these are transpyloric planes. Transpyloric plane, it passes midway between the suprasternal notch and the pubic symphysis and cuts the tip of the 9 costal cartilage at the level of L1 vertebra. Then we have supracrystal plane which passes through the highest point of the lac crest at the level of L4 vertebra. So these are the structures which are related at the level of transpyloric plane. These are the hilum of kidney, then first part of duodenum, pyloric part of the stomach, neck of pancreas, formation of portal vein and origin of superior mesenteric artery. Now the com 
come to the uh, anterior abdominal wall layers these are made up of from the front the skin then superficial fascia then we have the muscles then we have fascia transversalis behind it we have extra peritoneal connective tissue and the innermost structure is parietal peritoneum the skin is highly stretchable in the abdomen and it presents the midline vertical furrow as we can see in the diagram umbilicus linea semilunaris three transverse furrows and stria gabbardinum stria gabbardinum these are the irregular white lines due to degeneration of the fibrosis of subcutaneous fat this is found only in multiparous women then the umbilicus umbilicus is a normal scar it normally lies at the level of intervertebral disc between l3 l4 and is supplied by t10 spinal nerve segment it marks the watershed line of the body it is the important site of portocaval anastomosis the meeting point of four folds in the embryo and the meeting point of three systems that is the vascular git and the excretory systems then beneath the skin we find the superficial fascia the superficial fascia is made up of two layers that is the outer fatty and the inner membranous layer the superficial fascia it contains fat and this fat varies in thickness below the inguinal ligament it is continues as the fatty layer of thigh in men this fascia forms dartos muscle of the scrotum and in women it forms the major part of labia majora so here we can see the yellow colored area which is the fatty layer of the superficial fascia also known as campus fascia this is forming the major part of labia majora then the membranous layer of the superficial fascia it is known as scarpa's fascia scarpa's fascia it continues in the form of fascia lata in the thigh and in the perineal region it forms the colles fascia the deeper layer in case of males it is also forming in another structure that is the fundiform ligament of the pannus then the deep fascia it is absent in the anterior abdominal wall because it is formed by the collagenous fibrous membrane which is non elastic and might prevent bulging of the anterior abdominal wall then there is a term known as superficial inguinal space it is a space between the membranous layer of the superficial fascia and the abdominal osseous of external oblique muscle the urine when extra visited may appear in the space from the superficial perineal pouch now the cutaneous nerves which are supplying to the skin of the anterior abdominal wall they include the lower sixth thoracic and the first lumbar nerve then the vessels of the anterior abdominal wall these are the branches of superior and inferior epigastric artery branches of posterior intercostal artery and the superficial branches of femoral artery like superficial epigastric superficial circumflex like and superficial external pudendal then the cutaneous veins below the umbilicus they drain into the great saphenous vein and eventually in the inferior vena cava and above the umbilicus they are draining into the superior vena cava then there are five anterolateral muscles of the abdomen external oblique internal oblique transverse abdominis and the two vertical muscles like rectus abdominis and the paramedialis muscle so these are the muscles of your anterior abdominal wall first we come to the external oblique external oblique muscle have its origin from the outer surfaces of lower eight ribs so here we can see the origin that is from the outer surfaces of lower eight ribs and the insertion is on the iliac crest outer lip of the iliac crest ventral segment of the outer lip of the iliac crest is giving insertion also it is inserted in the form of linea alba linea alba is extending from the foot process up to the pubic symphysis the identification of the fibers of the external oblique is that the fibers of external oblique they are running downwards forwards and medially in this direction so in this way we can identify 
the external oblique muscle in the cadaver. Then the nerve supply, external oblique muscle is supplied by the inferior six intercostal nerves. So here we can see the difference between the linea alba and the linea semilunaris. Linea alba is an extensive aponeurosis which extends between ziphoid process and the pubic symphysis and the linea semilunaris it is the lateral margin of rectus abdominis muscle. Special feature of this muscle is that it has three free border inferior free border of this muscle is forming the inguinal ligament then it has one opening which is known as superficial inguinal ring so here we can see the superficial inguinal ring in the external oblique muscle this is the superior view of the inguinal ligament here we can see sacrum behind and anteriorly we can see the inguinal ligament which is formed by the infolding of the external oblique upper neurosis. Then we have the inguinal ligament also known as Puppert's ligament. It is formed by the lower border of external oblique muscle which is rolled on itself backward. Inferiorly it is attached to the fascia lata and superiorly it gives origin to internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle. The attachment is from anterior superior like spine up to pubic tubercle. The grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament is from the medial half of the inguinal canal. Now the expansions of the inguinal ligament. Expansions are lacunar ligament, reflected part of inguinal ligament and pectineal ligament of Cooper. Now the structure is attached to the inguinal ligament on the upper surface. From the lateral two third we have origin of internal oblique, from lateral one third we have origin of transverse abdominis and from middle one third we have origin of cremaster muscles. The lower surface gives attachment to fascia lata. Then come to the internal oblique muscle. It arises from the lateral two third part of the inguinal ligament as we can see in the diagram. Then the intermediate area of the ventral segment of the elite crest and then this is the thoracolumbar fascia. Then the insertion is on the inferior border of lower 3 to 4 ribs in the form of linea alba which is inserting on the pubic crest then the medial part of pectin pubis. Now supply of this muscle is by the lower six intercostal nerves and the first lumbar nerve. So here we can see the internal oblique muscle. The direction of the fibers of the internal oblique muscle they are perpendicular to the external oblique and they are upwards, forwards and medially. Then we come to the thoracolumbar fascia. It is a deep investing membrane throughout the posterior part of the thorax and abdomen. This green colored area is demarcating the thoracolumbar fascia. Above it is continued with the nuchal fascia of the neck. This is the transverse section of the abdomen to see the layers of thoracolumbar fascia. There are three layers of the thoracolumbar fascia, anterior, middle and posterior. So the fusion of anterior and middle layers gives origin to internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle as we can see in the diagram. Then we have the cremaster muscles which is well developed in males. It consists of U-shaped loops of internal oblique muscle and the nerve supply is by the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve. The function of this muscle is that it pulls the testis upwards for closure of superficial inguinal ring. Then we have the transverse abdominis muscle. As the name indicates, the fibers are running horizontally and there is origin from the lateral one third of the inguinal ligament and the inner lip of the ventral segment of the iliac crest and from the thoracolumbar fascia also from the inferior inner surface of 7 to 12 ribs then the insertion is on the linea alba the pectin pubis and the pubic crest 
then the nerve supply of this muscle is same again that is by the ventral ramus of lower six intercostal and the first lumbar nerve so this is your transversus abdominis muscle the fibers are running horizontally then we have the conjoint tendon on pubic crest and medial part of pec and pubis the relations are in front of it we have reflected part of inguinal inguinal ligament and behind it we have fascia transversalis extra peritoneal tissue and the peritoneum this is can be seen in the diagram now next muscle of your anterior abdominal wall is rectus abdominis muscle this muscle arises from the pubic crest and the pubic symphysis as we can see in the diagram and it is inserted in a horizontal way on the 567 costal cartilages it possesses tendinous intersections as we can see there are 3 to 4 tendinous intersections in this muscle so here we can see the tendinous intersections of the rectus abdominis muscle this muscle is enclosed in a rectus sheath which is a fibrous sheath which is enclosing this muscle this is supplied by lower 6 intercostal nerves then the another muscle of the anterior abdominal wall is pyramidalis muscle it is a small triangular rudimentary muscle arising from the pubic crest and inserted in the linea alba it is supplied by the subcostal nerve that is the 12th thoracic nerve so these are the actions of the muscles that is they are supporting your abdominal viscera movement of the trunk also helpful for the forceful respiration and the expulsive acts like vomiting defecation and parturition so this completes our topic the muscles of anti abdominal wall thank you